What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age on Nintendo Switch. This might seem obvious, but I'm always so interested whenever there's a franchise that's been running as long as this one has, because it ends up amassing a giant fan base, A community of ultra-hardcore players that enjoy trying to beat each of the games over and over again, discussing them, trying to determine which one is truly the best of the best. It's this fandom that originally drew my attention to FF12. You know, when this came out back in the day, it was heavily overlooked. For the most part, people sort of just dismissed it as a weird weird little experiment and instead was focusing on further projects down the road. And what's really kind of interesting is now, as time's gone on, people have begun to realize that this is something that is truly special. For the most part, I feel like it's an RPG that actually breaks almost every single rule of role-playing games. Just as a random example, it doesn't really have a main character. Almost everybody plays some sort of leading role, and because of this, it makes it where the entire story ends up being written in a very different style. It doesn't just have a singular primary viewpoint, which makes the entire struggle at the heart of this conflict have a wider scope, and therefore it makes it where the entire war that's going on throughout this game ends up having a bigger impact on you emotionally. But that's just one aspect of it. I really want to basically aim this review at people who have never tried Final Fantasy XII because it's actually spectacular. It is a game that absolutely everybody should try out, not just if you're somebody who's typically into this genre. The biggest thing that's really sort of stands it apart from even other Final Fantasies is how peculiar the combat is. This was released shortly after Final Fantasy XI, which was obviously an online title, and they tried to adopt certain facets of that into this. Like one of the main things is, while there is a technically turn-based combat, for the most part everything is actually happening simultaneously, which means that as you roam through the field, instead of having instant battle screens break out, people can at any moment ambush you. You can be blindsided by enemies at any moment of any day, and so you need to constantly be on your guard. And then when they do attack you, you need to actually be prepared for just trying to drop them as quickly as you can using the Gambit system. So basically, the weirdest part about this game, but also the thing that really just makes me love it so much, is that you control one character specifically, but if you want, you can freeze time and command each of your people one by one, telling each person when to heal, when to cast a giant attack, or use one of their crazy ultimate specials like this. But additionally, there is a way where you can actually program your teammates to fight automatically. You can make it where they'll now, whenever they get low health, they'll use a potion on you or one of their friends. You can make it where they'll automatically use all their strongest magic to back up you and take down your target. It's something that can make it where the random battles when you're just running around in the field can be extra extra streamlined and you'll only need to hyper focus when it comes to the giant boss fights. Now you'll notice that during the introduction I had to specify that this is the Zodiac Age. This is technically a re-release they did later on in Japan that's now coming to America. And what makes it really special is the fact that they decided to basically rework how the magic and class system works. Initially, you basically had to choose what you wanted a character to be very early on and stick with it. But now, instead what they've done is they've created a class system that feels a little bit more like something like Final Fantasy Tactics. It allows you to create a much deeper specification to each of the different characters. It's really cool because somebody I really, really love is Fran. She's actually my favorite character in the game because she's like a seven foot tall bunny girl with a six foot tall bow. And I could actually specify if I wanted her to be a sniper or a really heavy ranged fighter, or if instead I wanted to try and mix her up and instead make her a time mage and just cast haste in every single battle. It makes it where as you play through this game, you get a lot more options for how you want to play, and also it makes it where as you get stronger, you actually feel it. I feel like, as much as I love all the Final Fantasies, a lot of them make it where as you get stronger, it's such a slow and incremental phase, you never feel that big leap of strength, where suddenly you feel like you could conquer anything. That is definitely one of the coolest aspects of FF12, is that when you get a big ability, you absolutely feel it. Now, something else they've done in the Zodiac Age version is they've actually tweaked a couple of the different items
items in dungeons to make it where certain bosses have ever so slightly less health and things like that. Now this is something you wouldn't notice if you've never tried the game beforehand, but as somebody who's actually beaten the original version a couple times and now this redone version, I strongly prefer this redone version. I actually think that the changes they've made fundamentally improve the experience. Something else they've done which is a very nice change is that everybody who even joins your party for short bits is playable. In the original version there'd be these people called guests, who typically would join for a singular part of the story, and these are people who used to be very very mighty. There were people who basically would help you try and take down that next big boss, and then there'd be some storyline excuse for why they had to move on. Well in this version you can actually directly control them, and I think that's great. It's really cool to actually be able to get these supercharged people and pound some faces them, as well as your own personal characters. Now, I know that some of you may be wondering this, but all this footage here is being recorded, of course, on a docked Nintendo Switch. But you're probably wondering, how does it look in handheld? Well, I can say that it seems to run absolutely spectacular. It seems like it's making basically no sacrifices and seems to be running at a very steady frame rate. All the font is very, very clear, and I think that's very, very important. And it basically makes it where if you're trying to just do a full master file and get every single quest and every single item, you are going to have the option to play this handheld a lot and not sacrifice anything for it. Now something else you may be wondering is, is this at all a step down from the PlayStation 4 version? Because this actually came out quite a while ago, even on PS4, so it goes on sale a lot. So I'm sure that some of you are wondering if this is actually worth purchasing specifically on the Switch. Well I feel like the graphics are actually quite comparable and the prices aren't too far off. Like right here you're seeing just a, a typical comparison, on the left here is gameplay that I recorded on my PS4 Pro, and on the right is Nintendo Switch docked, and I think that for the most part they're very very close. These are, in my opinion, a very very accurate and very good representation. I think that this is a fantastic port, and it's pretty dang good. Now I do want to say that, in general, this game is fantastic. Easily you can play this game 60-70 hours no problem, just because there is so much good grinding. But if you're somebody who's actually in a rush, and you're just trying to beat this game because you've always been curious about it, one of the newly introduced mechanics is speed mode. You can actually put it to a much faster pace, which makes it where you can actually run through dungeons way, way faster, you can grind a lot quicker, and honestly, I do like it because if you combine this with the Gambit system, it makes it where you can very much skip past the bigger open areas. Like some spots of the game, especially later on, there are huge open fields or giant complicated forests that you do need to backtrack through occasionally, so it is nice that you have the option to just speed through it if you want, or turbo level yourself by just turning on super speed, turning on all your best gambits, and grinding through that. It really makes it where you can streamline the overall experience, and stuff like this is very nice to me because if I'm trying to play a game for a bunch of bunch of hours and there's just a certain part I want to swing past, I like having the option. I didn't use it that much, but it's one of those things that here and there is absolutely vital to a nice clean playthrough. Now if you're somebody who does consider themselves as ultra hardcore and wants to try and push themselves to the limit and actually conquer every single aspect of this game, there is a final challenge that is accessible called Trial Mode. Now this is something that is being newly introduced in the Zodiac Age Edition and it is brutal. Let me tell you right up front, there is a good chance you will never beat this and don't feel bad. It is tough. It is basically a special tower that is just floors and floors of enemies that get increasingly more difficult, and if you manage to beat it, at the very top is a super ultimate crazy boss. I like having this kind of stuff though because it creates a perfect goal in your mind. It makes it where you end up wanting to try and talk to your friends and create strategies and maybe just rework an entire character's playability to make sure you can possibly survive even one more floor. And I think that it's a really nice touch to basically create content for the ultra ultra serious players like myself who want to try and push themselves to the absolute Final Fantasy limit. Overall, I gotta say that this version is very, very nice. I do think that it sort of drains my battery a little bit fast in handheld, which is a bit of a disappointment. I, I hate any of the, the games that just completely set my battery, and this is one of them. Uh, the only other flaw I really have is that sometimes I do think that the game, there are certain sections of it that seem like they tried to simplify it a bit too much. There used to be a couple extra switches in some dungeons, or one boss that's supposed to have like a million health and now they only have 
150,000 health. It just basically makes it where a couple aspects of it have been slimmed down to just maybe a little bit too much of a degree. But even still, these are tiny complaints in an almost perfect game. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age on Nintendo Switch a 9.5 out of 10. If you're somebody who considers themselves just lightly into RPGs and you want to try something different, I absolutely recommend this. And if you're somebody who considers themselves an ultra-serious RPG fan, still, you should get this. Physical or digital, it is a great freaking chunk of value, and everybody should pick it up. And you know what, I actually want to end this video a little bit different, which is, I'm going to put a bunch of links because now I've reviewed Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy IX, and Final Fantasy X Collection all on Switch as well as this one so I want to actually end this video with a bunch of links to that if you haven't seen those already uh, basically they're all great they're all great for totally different reasons though so I do hope you check those out you guys rock please give this video a like but do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming